Okay, in this video, we're going to look at 0 to 20 milliamp current loop control, which is the industry standard for process control signaling. So instead of sending a voltage value of, say, 0 to 10 volts, we send a current value of 0 to 20 milliamps in a current loop to control our device. Now we're going to use a microcontroller to create a 0 to 20 milliamp current loop. And I'm using the parallax propeller chip, as you can see here. And this is my circuitry which will, which will create a 0 to 20 milliamps current loop. So from 0 to 20 milliamps in our loop, we're going to have 0 to 100% range of control of our, of our device. Now there's another standard, it's called 4 to 20 milliamps. So instead of starting at 0, we're going to start at 4. So a couple of reasons for that. First of all, there's always current in our loop, so we could power remote devices. And it's great for troubleshooting. So we know there's always current in the loop. So if we put our ammeter in any of our loops and we detect current, we know our loop is intact. Now the current loop has very high noise immunity as it's a low impedance circuit. So we could run long cables and the loop supply can compensate for the voltage drop in the line. So in our, in our demo here, in our video, we're going to use 0 to 20 milliamps in our, in our current loop. Uh, we could change it to 4 to 20 just by software change. So 0% pulse width modulation will equal 0 current and 100% pulse width modulation will equal 20 milliamps. So we're going to use the PWM uh, on the parallax propeller board that was fed in from P1 into my circuitry to control the 0 to 20 milliamps. And I send a, a 0 to 255 value in through the serial port into my microcontroller into the code to control the 0 to 20 milliamps output. So a value of 0 into the serial port will equal 0 current, 0 milliamps, and 255 will equal 20 milliamps. And I've, I've used a LED in my circuit, in my current loop, for demo purposes, so we can monitor the brightness of the LED as we change our current loop from 0 to 20 milliamps. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the output of my microcontroller on pin 1, which is my PWM output, which is feeding my circuitry. So right now I have 0% PWM, so the LED on my board, you can see there is off. So if I give it some pulse width modulation signal, increasing it, you can see the LED getting brighter. And I'll go all the way up to full brightness, so that will be 20 milliamps right there. That will be 255 value that's sent into my serial port to give me 20 milliamps. And if I bring it down towards zero again, you can see the LED getting dimmer as the current drops. And now we're back down to zero. So I've total control of my zero to 20 milliamp current loop using pulse width modulation just by sending a value of zero to 255 into my serial port. I can control my current from zero to 20 milliamps. Okay, I've removed the LED from my interface circuit board and I fed those connections into a variable frequency drive so I could control a three-phase motor. If we look at the terminal strip, and it's labeled ACI, that's analog current input. That's where you feed your 0 to 20 milliamp current loop. So now we can control a three-phase motor through the 0 to 20, 20 milliamp current loop. So right now it's in stop mode, so there's zero current. So if I increase the current by changing the pulse width modulation, I can increase the speed of the motor. So there's this 27.16 hertz signal, three-phase signal fed to the three-phase motor. And I can take it up to maximum speed, which is 60. So that'd be your maximum, and I could take it all the way down to stop using pulse width modulation. So I have total control over a three-phase motor with my little 0 to 20 milliamp current loop interface board. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on the breadboard on my propeller activity board. So this is my 0 to 20 milliamp current loop circuit. Now the heart of the circuit is an op amp. It's a CA3140 and it's a CMOS op amp so it has high input impedance and low power consumption. And it's driving a MOSFET transistor, a VN10KM. Now the input to the op amp is driven by RC low pass filter. And that's driven by a 3.3 PWM signal from the propeller microcontroller. So a 0% PWM signal will cause 0 volts on pin 3 of the op amp and a 100% PWM signal fed into the RC low pass filter will cause 3.3 volt DC level on pin 3 of the op amp. Now all op amps always want to make the inverting and not inverting pins the same. 
So it will drive the MOSFET transistor until pin 2 becomes equal to pin 3 voltage. So the voltage on pin 3 will always be a force across the 150 ohm resistor. So with a 100% PWM signal, we'll get 20, 20 milliamps through the 150 ohm resistor. Now that fixed resistor could be a, a trim pot, so we could actually fine tune it to exactly 20 milliamps. So 20 milliamps flowing through the 150 ohm resistor will also be 20 milliamps flowing through the LED. So by changing the PWM signal, we could actually control the 0 to 20 milliamps through the LED of this constant current circuit. Okay, I've changed the circuitry on my breadboard to do another experiment, which you might be interested in. Now I've removed the LED from the breadboard and I've replaced it with a OptoFET chip. It's a six pin dip, that's it right here. It's an H11F1. So with this chip, you could build a remote variable resistor. Now inside this chip there's an LED and if you feed it a current of 0 to 16 milliamps you'll get an output resistance from 100 ohms to 300 mega ohms. So you could have yourself a little remote variable resistor and it can handle up to 30 volts and 100 milliamps. So I'll hook it up to a meter and we can see how this device works. Okay, I dug out my old analog ohmmeter. It's a lot easier to demonstrate on an analog meter. And I've hooked up my meter leads across pins 4 and 6 of the OptoFET so we can monitor the resistance across those two pins as I increase the current through the internal LED. So right now I have zero current going through the LED so we're maxed out at around 300 mega ohms which is basically open circuit. Now as I increase the, the current through the LED, the internal LED of the OptoFET, you can see the resistance lowering and we can take it all the way down to around 200 ohms that's around 16 milliamps and I can increase the resistance by taking the current down so now the resistance is back up to 300 mega ohms so we have control over this resistance through this remote variable resistor that you could build 